maybe like sure. a nullifier, Aeon Disc, whatever. Yeah, we and see, we started to see a few calls, but pick up nullifiers. Yeah, yeah. Nullifiers in the rise situation, it's it's a pretty devastating item. It really is. Like the two times I've seen it in the games I've, I've I was part of, like yeah. it just was the best item that you could have gotten. So, uh, but back to the RTZ point, yeah. he's the one that spams a ton of pub games in okay. the new patch, and he is able to find what he thinks are the new best strategies, new he heroes, and then he kind of supply that information to the team, so his team is, I think, more or less well equipped to come into a new patch, perhaps even better. Than Ishii, of course, we know they're a good team. We do. Had they've, a they've had some great records. Rough patch, I guess. We're well, not patch, but like rough start of the season. Sure, yeah. But it's I, not, I think there'll be a bit of a I mean, it's back. not been a bad start. Like, it's still, you know, generally in comparison to other teams, it's still it's still been good, but definitely three for geniuses there with the players that they have. You know that they aim for a lot higher. And yeah, yeah, sure. They're still still working their way back up there. But Leicester VG will be able to talk about them as they will be playing in the series right after this one. But we've got another game between these two to go through. It's Optic Gaming versus Complexity. Game three, and let's see what we've got going on. Of course, no surprises here. Complexity, now look for the first blood. They'll smoke up, I'm sure, and look to try and make a bit of a play into the jungle of Optic. Let's see if it's successful. So the key thing I want to mention is that Z Freak will be playing the Ancient Apparition, and Kaya once again on the Kunkka. And important because Z Freak normally plays the four. Um, he normally farms a lot of more item on his support. A is generally considered as a five. Like it, between yeah. these two heroes, you, you normally see Kunkka as a four. So I, I wonder if Z Freak will be going for some sort of you know, non-traditional A items once again. See, there no surprises. The, uh, seconds to the decent win rate, the pairing of CK and AA. So many different ways that these heroes synergize with each other, from the cold feet to the way that you can hold them in place, guarantee the proc. A overall having that setup as well for Ice Blast if you get the good duration of a stun out with Chaos Bomb. But they won't find that bit of action that they came out hunting for. They do get the ward down around, you know, just giving a little bit of the, the vision on the, the mid lane behind the tier one tower. They'll return to their lanes. We'll see what matchups we get. Mu will indeed be stunning down on the bottom lane. We'll see how much Kyle hangs around or, or if indeed he leaves him by himself. As a uh, Will in fact be the CK being taken to the mid lane yep. and the Razor being taken to the top lane. So with that in mind, is this just some some better matchups for for Colt? Very strong matchup. As yeah. we see here, a ton of pressure on the mid lane. Torn's gonna hit right on point as well. That's your first blood damage. That is. And he even ate his uh first blood. GG branch tango, so that's slightly a little bit more economic damage that he's done to CCNC. I mean, that, 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 there I go, you know, he's not asking how good the matchups are, we just saw it then. Yeah. It's a very scary lane for Storm Spray early on. With that amount of catch instead of win level two's online for those two as well. Good luck as the Storm trying to lane without any sort of help that they almost certainly gonna have to send something in. But let's talk about this as well, you know, on this bottom lane, Pycat playing the carry on the night, Lumi. Misery, she will hold that fort falling very low. Purification will buy him enough time to survive, but uh, Pycat on this on yeah, what, the, What's the thought process here on Lumi? Yeah, the panel expected the Brewmaster to be carry, and, yeah. and Brewmaster has a crit build in, so in theory, you would imagine him, you know, playing quote unquote better than me, but let's not forget that at level 15, Omni Knight has a pretty decent damage challenge. You get plus 90 damage, and it's always a pretty meme pub build with things like base boot, S and Y kind of stuff. I don't think he'll go that route. I, I, I you don't think we're going to play that? Do you think we'll get, you get like the Radiant? Yeah, I think we're going to yeah. see some sort of Radiant, kind of a very tanky, uh, tanky Omni Knight that you have to deal with. I mean, he's giving me the run down here. I'll tell you what, he's going to do it. Pycat. DJ and Aura is the truth, man. It's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. And also because I feel like you get a lot of out of what uh, the Brewmaster gives you, even as an offlaner. Because it doesn't matter how much damage your Brewmaster does when he's split, right? And you, you generally pick Brewmaster for his own. So I, I feel like this might be the better way to divide the fight. But still, always interesting to see a team take a, a, a very different angle on the game. Especially when the, there were definitely other more, uh, more orthodox carries left in the pool. Yep. Optic Gaming. Opting to get the Omni Knight over the ball. I really like the the added synergy between having either a Chen or Enchantress with the Omni Knight. 
Because one one thing that you could do, do very well early game is send those Hold that thought here as TCMC might go down here again to Oh yeah, with this torrent, surely the damage is gonna be there. And indeed it is. Another pick up for Colin this mid lane. It's so spooky for the storm spirit. Any time the Kunker comes in range. She ever called it the classic dual lane. The reason we see it right there is you're looking at four to six seconds of chain stun. Yeah, it's crazy. It, there's nothing you can do about it. Like, you just need another one. Link. It's time for a stop. It's about a timeout. Oh, because the missile's running. That doesn't. GPD very low there. Zyra will make sure the limbs kept his distance. Out comes the Hadouken. Kyle does turn up. Has another one. Yeah, yeah, Limb's got to be careful. He's got the stick charges, though. Will be enough to bring in. Trying up, they throwing onto Zai. Oh, Zai could nice with it. That's a lot of experience. A decent static in there, Zai. We'll have to back off from the stop lane. That damage stolen is there. Right, so I was mentioning earlier, I really like the combo between Enchantress and Omni Knight because what you could do early game is just wrap around with just a single centaur, gank a lane. You get the stomp off, and then it also provides the, the heal bomb that you could throw on with a purification. Uh, we do see other, a lot of C teams run that strategy. I think Execration run it very well. One lane, Misery. Gets the grab on to move. He's gonna have Burrow Strike back up in a second, so we'll be able to try and run away. Pycat looks to chase him down again with his D-Gen aura. As we talked about, it's pretty damn strong for running down heroes. They will turn, they'll get the kill. Pycat should... Oh, he's not gonna be fine. Kofi kicks on. That must have kicked in just on the edge of the range there. It looked like yep. he was going to get away in time, but he did not. Nice return kill there from Z Freak turning up and managing to punish Pycat for his aggression. But as we can see, look at this in the mid lane. I mean, CCNC, he has no intention of going back there. He's just headed to the jungle. Oh. And then it comes to Zai, Kyle. Be a lot of damage stolen and die. As soon as that disable's already been expended, the TP out of the lane. I'm sure the Cole can't give him the run down and get that kill. I wonder if Moo will skip this blink again this game. I feel like this I'll game. Bet he, I, I reckon he will, you know. I, I think he has to get this you game. Think, like I mean, they've got the, the, they've got the Kunker though this time. They do have that range, you know, that well, range sort of setup. Okay, so that's definitely not true where he's the only stun. Sure. What I mean by that is he's the only stun that you can reliably work against the storm state. Like in the mid game, X doesn't really work that well because you can just time it and zip out of it. And then same thing with a chaos. CCNC checked right now by both the observer and the one more trap. Got it. One more. C freaks in the neighborhood. CCNC. Will be taken down and also to rub something through. Moo managed to get the final touch onto the Centaur. So, lots of gold there for Complexity. Up top, Kyle. Looking for the setup onto Zai. As we saw before, it's hard for the amount of evasion and mischance. See if they can actually do this. A lot of damage stolen as long as he can get it through. They should get the kill. Kyle looks for the block off with the Drunken Haze on Limb. It's enough to keep Zai safe. A very slippery hero with that amount of mischance and evasion being thrown about. Very early on in the landing stage. Now, reaction. Misery comes through. Telekinesis onto Limp, dragging him back into the clutches of PPD. PPD will find the kill. They look towards Kyle as well. The three of Optic punishing complexity as hard as they possibly can. Just slows out onto Kyle. They'll look to turn with the Torrent, but the Duke get out. Turn back in with a fade bolt from Misery. And Optic slap complexity down on the top lane. Man, it's so crazy, Brewmaster, how tanky he is. He just tanked the full duration of a static lane. And they couldn't hit him. He got pretty low, like that just faded the way Why is he still seeing that? Why is he there? That's a good question. What, what the hell was he doing? What? I'm really confused by that. I don't know what he was doing up <laughs> Why was he in the top lane by the side shot? Health blocks it. Z Freak does nice find River. Yeah, Boo should Gotta be, be able to get oh, okay. Verification gets you. And now Moon just burrow. burrows him to death. Burrow yeah. Strike will hit through the tree. Oh, he popped a salve as well, I think. Did he pike it? Nice fire, Steven. I mean, either way, he's dead. Yeah. Moo gets the kill. Also, Z Freak got a kill up top as well before that. So. All right. A couple of big ones for seven for the complexity. Seven for four. Oh, 
CCMC. He's he's having it. He's the he's the second lowest on that one. I mean, his career got ended last game, so I'm not even really. This is this is retirement CCMC. Mid lane, Colfi will prop. Chesty has to get himself away. Falling low, they got the quick X mark to make sure the Zai is held back. Misery, to see if he can get the second fade bot off to finish Chesty. Maybe to quite close the gap. We we'll look for the Tari. Zai, two kid out. Got the setup. He can do with the wraparound. Hey, well, that's going to do the job. Purification from Pika. Get Kyle. Pika has to be careful. Moon's going to come around with the rotation. He has got the epicenter. He's building it up. pika has got to be careful. He's healing. He's going to be able to save. Oh, oh no! What? Jesse pulled PPD in. It made him dodge the burrow strike and also somehow ended up with PPD positioned on the high ground. And now PPD just turns back in. He's going to look towards Seafreak. And I tell you what, with that Sentinel, he's going to get the kill. Oh, dear. Not the combo that Cole were looking for there as it falls apart and Opti get, get, get away with murder and PPD gets Maybe out of there. That is some true, I've never seen that before. That's some blessing from Ice Rock, right? You, you need your it's man, you need your name on the Aegis to pull that play off. What? <laughs> that rift just saving <laughs> PPD's <laughs> life. Oh, my goodness. Oh, goodness. I, I would be on for that. I hope he mostly isn't. <laughs> Getting his early level six. He got a very early level six as well last time. Given how poorly overall it has been playing in early. He, he's been one that's incredible. Like it. He's got a lane still ring into the face, but seems to be the build. He's level seven on move. So he's turning pretty confident to the man up. Won't be one again. Very hard for Pycat to get that man as long as any. He'll be two points in the team The low cooldown of Burrow's track is getting in the way. They'll look for an opening. And they do charge the blind tar. Pretty much the only way they can get it. And, uh, yeah, it's got the point in repair. Maybe to pop. One thing I haven't mentioned so far is that the last pick Omni Knight is also super good against the Kunkka. Sure. Uh, you know, we've seen so much. We'll see this again. Yeah, okay. Watch this rift from Chesty. I mean, bam, somehow. I think because there's a tree right. I get so they. Yeah, right, right where PPD would have been. It looks so to. weird because he kind of gets sent off to the right. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. it again. They, they, yeah, he would have like, got rifted right onto that. It's like right. Tree. Yeah, right onto sort of the tip of the cliff, and that forces him up. Yeah. PPD. Pulling off the hat. Z Freak looking for his level six. The level six would be really good pairing as a tanky, but. I had also pretty good at blocking most of the damage. Oh. Sort of base as well. There's a card on that to the combo with the Rafael Bat. Tell you what, Mike could still be in trouble. Good static link from Limp. Gonna build up the physical. Mike will continue to run. A lot of damage stolen. That's the, the clean 224 up for Limp. The Burrow Strikes from Limp. They've got the lockdown. And Omni Carry is gonna have to take a hard sit back. Now to 25. I didn't see whether his teleport skill was on clear down there or not. At the beginning of the fight, he could have repel TP. So there we have it. So the, the first time PyCat's debut on Omni Knight. And as we saw with PyCat's extensive career, quite the different heroes that he's played. So look at the opening on to Zai. So they have to burst to bring him down before the Primal's oh, can come out. They don't, they don't have quite enough damage. And now with Carl TP in it, he's fairly low. He's going to have the Rum coming through, covering them. So with that in mind, can he actually survive? It's in. enough damage, he's just stuck in the tree line. Zyra will back away, so up to gaming. Get the kill, get out. Lexi not with Dyer's enough damage to bring him down before Brown. In fact, oh, Z Freak, he tries to TP out, but Misery's in with the stolen power strike. Optic, they're getting more out of this one. They get the double kill. You see a little low on the mana. But Moo should be fine to walk this one off, but still, Radiant's good play from Optic. They come to the top lane, they make it their own. Normally, PPD is known for his ability to captain and lead his team, but I mean, look at his game. This game, he's actually like making huge plays. He's which, just he's leading the charge. I mean, he's he's playing Enchantress, which is a hero that you definitely can make those plays on. But because of his plays, he's really putting his team uh, in an early game lead, which is important to say. This is the first time we've seen it in this series. Three games now. Yeah. It was always complexly leading the early game, and now, granted, Optic doesn't exactly have the best. Game. As mentioned, Brewmaster and Omni Knight aren't exactly known for their late-game powers, but Storm definitely is. Storm definitely could hold the, uh, well, 
do, do everything in the late game, especially once he has a repel on him. And CC, is, he is recovering very nicely. He got taken down four times in the laning stage, but he's now back top of the network for his own team. And he's shortly going to be closing the gap to complexity. Zai jumps forward, looks for the clap. He's trying to get the spell on to Z3. Z3. He's bursted down by the purification. Chess is going to try and fight up in response. Phantasm drags in misery. They've got Lin's tired charging forward as well. CC, he zips. TP's out, he'll be fine. The same can't be said better for PPD as the X mark comes out from Kyle. Chesty gets the double kill. And the first big use of the Phantasm, and with the ult still up as well as, as the push from the rest of the side, they can move in onto this tier one tower. Fortification comes through. With a good duration of the Phantasm still there, they should have a good shot of finding this tier one. But we'll Optic try and come in with a defense. They're heading forward. TPs are coming in, so they're going to do their best to push Cole back, and Complexity will respect that. With the ult defended, they'll let the tier one be as Optic Gaming keep his standing. Although that looked pretty bad for Optic there, their best counterplay was in the fight, which is the Omni ult. Yeah, Omni doesn't even have the ult right now. He doesn't have it skin. Uh, when once those kind of late game big team fight comes out, you can be sure that Omni will be there, and a great Guardian Angel pretty much makes the, the CK illusion useless. And then at that point, you have the enchantress to do one of the illusions, and you can spells on those. And you can, in theory, take care of the Chaos Knight. Of course, it comes down to what angle the CK comes in. Denied. It looks like that. Zai, I'm watching the bottom lane. There's the blink. Farmer's good as well. They're bringing in Tide Cat back towards the bottom. Maybe seeing if they can get a chance to fight. But you and Kyle. I wonder if. Complexity is focusing too much of their attention onto Zai. I feel like killing the Storm and killing the Brewmaster, it comes down to whether you could change them, change them done, right? From 100 down to zero. And Storm has less armor, less evasion, and less HP. I feel like he's the easier kill between the two. And Storm is also the more important kill, because I feel like Storm is going to be doing the majority of the lifting in the, in the late game. Whereas Brewmaster pretty much got what he needs, which is the Blink Dagger. So. I don't know if I agree with Complexity's Radiant decision to constantly scanning. gank Zai. They really are going all out in the bottom lane. Kyle, hiding, trying to get the X mark opening. Where these heroes, but it's going to be hard with Complexity. Ah! Unless they can get the blind time. DMP and PPD quick to make the jump. Take down the AA bottom lane, move. Backing away. Middle tower has fallen. 10 10 as it stands, but Optic making, as I say, such a, such a good recovery with CCNC. He did have a horrible start with the pressure that Complexity were putting on, but that's all been forgotten now at this stage. He's second highest in net worth. He's exactly where I thought would have to be in 15 minutes. In fact, I'm not sure what the answer is when you put the repel onto the storm switcher. Like, does Complexity have anything that deals with that? I know how to say that. Good, good, nice, two man for right. Very nice indeed for move. Steps up for the kill onto the fine cat carry. So if he can chase down more lift, has the eyes of storm, he's looking towards misery. He'll put PPD in it, he'll sell it beneath this. He'll be able to contain the razor, hold him back. Minimalize their losses, but that is still, it's still a big one. Losing the Omni Knight. That is their carry. And Pycat is not jumping ahead in far. He is starting to slightly fall behind. And I say slightly, he's 2k behind the CK on the other side that he's going to be expected to carry up against yep. as the game goes on. And uh, he said at the start, this hero, the Omni Knight, not the average carry by any means. I, I don't think that's too big of a deal. If he was playing like on his game one tro or the game two PA, I would be a lot more worried. But it's an Omni. Yeah, and I feel like he does a lot, even with very little in the network. Like pretty much his his pick for his repel and guardian angel this top lane. Kyle, go down here. I think. Yeah, CCC does no, got decent mana mana in the tank. Yeah. Like, again, I think Storm is really going to be a carry and a damage dealer. It's pretty much. They're, they're drafting around CTNC and, and building a team around them. Well then, Zai, <laughs> move here. They have the telekinesis from Misery. They put the Primal Split. They should have enough control on to move. They do indeed. Boulders of the face, and Zai with the reaction. Quick to make the play. He's going to see if he can set up for more. Catch anyone else out of this one. Got the vision onto Z3. Can't quite get the Wind Panda in range, though, as it seems. So. 
Let's see if we'll get the rest of them out of there. They're definitely so far seeming to set up to be the culmination of the series that we host. So fairly between both sides. Both building up power and presence. I mean, coming into this, that's just the reason we're taking a lot of us expected uh, complexity to, to win it, given how well they recently play in the events. But Optic has really shown a lot of growth in this series in particular. They, Absolutely. They're yeah. doing a lot better. And I think this game already, they have overtaken complexity in terms of yeah. uh, starting to outplay complexity, expecting where they're coming in. And kind of going in the same uh, trajectory in how this game's going, I think Optic's going to take it. Okay. I mean, for me, it's still, it, it feels like there's a lot of weight on CCNC and Steve because of the fact that Pycat is farming on the Omni Knight. You know, a lot of work is going to have to be done as the game goes on by the Storm Spirit. But so far, so good in terms of the way he's been getting himself back up, the way he's been carrying himself to this point. It is setting up to be a, a game where CCNC will perform on the Storm. Yep. And he has the means to do so, as you say, with the backup that he has, the lineup around him. It does set up very nicely for a Storm to get the job done in the mid game. Yeah, I saw he killed up the dr drums earlier, which would be very good for this TK in terms of like, you know, running at people, running at towers, but it's really just not that type of game. Their game involves around how many times can you kill CCNC or the Omni Knight, and drums doesn't really help you do that, the blink does. TP out from Kyle, limp, halfway, so halfway for the S1, and he tanked up and had to push it. Cole will look to pull off one. What sort of the next major item or so is picked up by Limp on the CK? I'm oh, sorry, Chessie on the CK. And Chessie at the moment, how's he doing? He's just finished the Echo Saber. Going for a blink. Okay. A yeah. bit of extra catch, uh, which is needed, and definitely any sort of way that they can get to the back lines. And, you know, if they can take the Omni out at the start of a team fight, it's going to make things a whole world easier for complexity in the 5v5s. Yeah, not only can he do the blink stun play like you're mentioning, he could also pre-cast his Phantasm, leave his illusions behind, and then blink in reality, and then all of his illusions will also pop in. I got whatsoever. Seeing the power of that repel. Very, well, yeah, at this stage, pretty much nothing that Cole can do. There'll be the point where there'll be enough physical, on the CK, but that, that part Stupendous. not quite here yet. Kyle hunting. Just seeing if he can get his hands on both of the rings. It's not going to be the key. Complexity should definitely look to smoke up right now. They just picked up two of their blink. If they could get a big play, they could either take Radiant down Rishon or, or starting to get some powers. At this point, in both, uh, both the previous ones and have begun sieging the tier two. This is definitely a very different well, Misery point. made a, a bit of a, a risky play here. It does show himself. They're going to move in with three. Misery's not getting out of that. Yeah. Thought he may have played a little safer there because they did scan up, but they, they knew that there was more behind those heroes, but come on, a step too close to the shot. So we saw Gabe move the vision. Bottom lane, Ice Blast connects. TP coming in from Moo. He's got the blink dagger. Won't quite be able to find the catch. He's up to gaming right for the back up immediately. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Complexity will would look to, to look for that sort of follow-up. And it is a close game into 12, 12, 21 minutes in. Sure, the two highest net worth is on complexity. But we've seen how free of a game it could be for the Storm Spirit and the Repel. And once CCNC has the Bloodstone, he is closing in. He can start running up those charges. He could get a little crazy for Cole to do it. The X mark onto Zai. Combo timing this time around, not quite there for Kyle. Can't set up into the boat. And even if he did so, unlikely to have enough damage to bring that blue down to the Baltic. Creeps being fed in by PPD. Bird in, gets taken down. Just to make Dyer's the next top play. Tower is under Got a haste rune down bottom. <laughs> Maybe they can invade and Radiant catch someone out. Yes, DK has a haste rune, so definitely could follow up again for this one. Completed at some while. Not really too sure whether I'm going to feel the impact of this razor. Dyer's top tower is under I, I don't think 
the static link in particular goes too much of anything. I mean, it, yeah, it, it's going to be tricky. And I'll tell you what, then, Moon finding a perfect setup there with the Boros Strike. GA comes out. Pycat trying to run himself away. Not going to make it. More than enough damage coming out from Complexity. A little bit sloppy. They did sort of rift him out of the Ice Blast Blast radius. But yeah. The pass over still there. It was good enough to bring him down. Got the debuff on him. And he, I believe, just used Guardian Angel. So. He did. Yeah, pop GA on the way down there. So that, that is that big cooldown that Complexity can now look to try and use ground. And in fact, they found it. Cassius straight up. They managed to find Zai. Will he get the chance to get the old out? He will. Thanks to Misery coming in with the stolen Boros Strike. Gives the time for the Primal Spirit to be there. CC and Steve turning up into town now. They'll turn straight towards Chessy on the Chaos Knight and they'll get the kill. Big tick off for Optic Gaming. And Misery's Boros Strike skills and usage has been the reason why they're winning. I was going to say, he has loved these games where he's playing up against the Sand King and he's a Rubik. Right, apart, apart, from to be the, the dream. apart from the stolen Boros Strike, Optic doesn't really have like good disables built in, into the hero. I'm sure, they have telekinesis and maybe an enchantment. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Nothing compared to that barrel strike. He's making huge strike. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. We'll go back and finish up the drum on Moon. He's got that on top of the blink dagger. So, uh, Z Freak has queued up his Rod of Atos for the longest time, and then he decides to go back for the, the Hannah Midas. I think I agree with this decision a little bit more. Yeah, sure, the Rod of Atos is going to be good against the Storm Spirit, and I have mentioned how many times that. They definitely need more disable against the Storm Spirit, but his, his progression was so slow. He also didn't take his level 10 GPM power. Normally, you can take that idea. Now, bottom. They will get the blind. Oh, have they got enough physical? They have not. Not with the eye of the storm. It's just not quite enough. So close, but I can't get himself away. Plays like this, where complexity aren't getting the big kills that their lineup requires at this stage of the game. Ooh. Optic thinks they could go strong and immediately complexity reacts. They're heading straight over there. They got Phantasm back up in eight seconds. All right, Omni Knight is the pick. If you pick Omni Knight before his Guardian comes out, I don't think Guardian is actually back up just yet. Yeah, still on cooldown as for now for Omni. And in fact, look, he gets caught out on the sidelines. Moves straight there with the jump in. Oh, get up. Look at the Phantasm opportunity. He gets it off. He's got all the three extra illusions out. He looks towards Pycat with the repel. Pycat making it away for now. He has blink. Keep that in mind. He's trying to get this catch off. He's going to be able to jump forward. And there we go. Jumps in, grabs Pycat, brings him back, and brings him down. Pycat gone. Do think he any more? CC and C. Zipping in. Zipping out. He's out of mana, does have to be careful on this Storm Spirit. Moon's gonna come in with the jump. But look at this primal split from Zai. It's just controlling Chesty perfectly on the back of it all. Chesty just can't get involved in the fight. CCNC has to kill himself. Uses the bloodstone through as Zai gets out of the game. But overall, Complexity do indeed take the majority of the kills. They knock those bloodstone charges down, forcing him to kill himself. They get Pycat, they get Misery, and Roshan still stands, sitting at just under half HP. Without the CK, Complexity themselves can't go in and grab it. And that's the problem. I think Complexity, once CK respawn, he won't have Phantasm. But once Optic's heroes respond, they will have Guardian yeah. back up. So I think Optic could just go back in. Despite losing the fight here, they could just go back in and take a Roshan. I also think in that fight, there was a bit of miscommunication between CCNT and the rest of his team. I'm not sure why Storm jumped in and essentially... It was a massive jump. Yeah, traded his life for the CK. Uh, yeah. I mean, Storm's the one with the Bloodstone charges, so I think that's not really a good thing. Again with the Burrow Strike setup, they've got the Ice Blast. I don't think they can get a few right, I think they could do it, but the TA comes through. Pycat keeps himself alive, and obviously now with the response, jump forward. Telekinesis drops and move back into purification from... Yeah. Yep. The Radiance finish in that fight for Omni Knight is going to be huge. Not only is he yep. going to right click so much harder now, the evasion chance, of course, is going to stack up and it's going to be pretty nice for Steam. And not only that, there's two big ideas on the side of complexity. So, so he's going to be in the middle of the fight, it's going to be hard to kill, and he's going to be making the job of complexity much harder. So with it, every item pickup, I feel like complexity is falling a, slightly further behind. I just don't know if he's going to be and this razor pick, I, I, I don't know. 
stage. I mean, it's, it's top of the farm, but as you say, you know, with Razor, it's, it either goes one way or another. He has this massive impact where he's pushing, they're fighting around him, and it's impossible for the oppos opp opposition to do anything. But you have these games where, sure, he hits the creeps, but he turns up the fight and he sort of get ignored. They do manage to find Zyde, looking to try to get the Primus but off, but a great time from the low ground. Kyle disables him, Zyde can't get the Primus off. Well, Misery caught out in the jungle of Complexity. Complexity is quick to find two very easy kills. And this will give a bit of an opportunity for them to head in the pit. See if DSD is still alive. And see if they do any sort of sneaky play to try and steal it. I mean, DSD has actually gone back to base, so he's not in the neighborhood for now. And with that in mind, I think Complexity, they will get away with it. Those two kills are enough to buy space for Cole to go into the pit, give themselves the ages, and Optic Gaming don't have the chance to have a look in. That's a huge break for the team. I, I think that was a very dangerous moment uh, for Complexity. They are able to get essentially two free kills and the Roshan. Yeah. It's big stuff. Really good stuff, yeah. That's the BKB as well, finished for, for Razor. So we'll see how aggressive they hey. play in and how they play as a team and, and a unit. So we've seen for, for sort of the last eight minutes or so it feels like it, it has just been the farm game for complexity. Yet to really sort of group back up as a five and, and really try and push the issue. The still standing, they're yet to look to take them. As they themselves, they did lose that tier two earlier in the top lane. They keep to try and aggressively fight into the agent. Always when these sort of smokes come Radiant's out, it could be, it's, it's a very sort of high risk, high reward player. He could certainly catch complexity off guard if they don't expect Optic to make this sort of aggressive play. Whilst it is themselves that have the ages, but we'll see if they get caught out. At the moment, they're absolutely just elsewhere. They're miles away from the fight from Optic, and Optic will not find the pickoff they were hoping for. Yeah, complexity lineup is really bad when they're being jumped on as opposed to when they're actually doing the initiation. If you if you look at the lineup, it feels like Kunza and AA. They're very good offensively, but w let's say when CK gets jumped right now, Kunka's spells are so delayed that by the time that you actually do that, those, those heroes that are getting jumped could just be dead. Same thing with Z-Freak. I mean, Z-Freak has like no defensive capability at all. So it's, it's always a good move for Optic to just look, look for a smoke play even into the Aegis, simply because the backline complexity is so weak. It's a bit of a field spell man for Z3 there as he was coming to hide in the tree line. Does he get to use his Midas yet? No, he's, he's still there. Give me a creep. Use the Midas, Z3. He's just not finding the chance to do so. And big, I like this. 7 yeah. 7. The iron pick up the crew. I mean, out of all the heroes, this is definitely one of the heroes that it absolutely makes sense on giving, or well, pretty much the guaranteed Radiant chance to get off your primal split. It's so hard to, to sort of Radiant's work around it and stop him from getting that ultimate off now, thanks for that two seconds of invulnerability. Yeah, you really want it on heroes like, like Dream Master, yeah. who, his primary job is to get off the um, It, it kind of compares to like a Kraken shell from Tie Hunter. That, the reason that makes Tai such a good initiator is you know no matter what the guns and silences you throw at him, he is going to get off the ult. Like, it's kind of the same idea. So it is a very, very expensive item. But let's not forget the other part of the item, which is, I think, the often overlooked part, which is the status resistant part. He has a lot of strength to begin with. He adds it up. Yeah, it adds up a lot, and he's going to shake off a lot of that disables much quicker compared to the most like, normal. I mean, there really is, like, no reason for Zyne not to be Every team fight, we will see those, those three bears come out. Yeah, and that's a big problem. Like, it's like... Yeah. I think Complexity already has it, I mean, issues to deal with, like, catching this one. And now we're gonna see that wraparound coming up from the north side. Yeah, this could really catch Complexity off guard. I don't know if Limp's gonna be prepared for this one. He does have the BKB, so I actually blinks in run up to the back lines, goes to the primal split. BKB comes out from Limp, but straight away the static link is broken. BKB forces himself away. Moon comes in with the bro stroke at the sideline. The CCC zips out of the ultimate. He's not gonna be hit by the boat, comes back in. Trying to look for Kyle. The Kyle has the rum on him. A lot of damage with those keeping this Kunkra alive. And now with the Burrow Strike, oh. Ice Bar perfectly on target by Z Freak as he lands it on PPD and Pycat. Optic lose two despite themselves trying to force the issue. And now, so they're moving for more. Sure, he had the Eon disc, but Zai, he's already used the ultimate. He gets that smart back into the hands of Cole. Yes, he brings him in with a rift, grabs the double kill. And now, Optic, they're three men down, three men without buyback, and complexity there into the base. And that was a very sloppy team fight for both sides here. Oh, <laughs> taking the ages. 
Uh, we saw Lim missing the link, we saw Kyle missing the link, but the fact of the matter is, their heroes are just super tanky, and Stormster at this point in the game isn't doing enough damage by himself. If you look at, without the, the lineup, without the storm, who else is actually yeah. doing the damage? I mean, that's the thing, and any, any time the Flycat doesn't have to repel on himself, Mu is instantly in with a Burrow Strike setup. Yeah. And there's no Guardian Angel in that team fight. that's also the big critical thing. Like, yeah. he, he doesn't get out of spell, Pycat. Ripped everyone apart. Pycat, I think, is the most important hero in terms of defensive capability on the lineup, and he cannot get caught up. Radiant's bottom shrine is under attack. Even at the point where you sort of wonder, should we see any on desk on him? And I know no, it's not really the dream item when you are the position one carry. You need so much other stuff. What, what is he building on now at the moment? I mean, which pie? Lincoln Spear, great okay. choice. I mean, okay, I mean, that, that's, yeah, that does offer him, again, that sort of defensive potential to get the chance. I, I mean, between, spell between, off. between Aeon Disc and Lincoln Spear, you can make the argument that Aeon Disc might be better. Because it's true. very similar to the Brewmaster, he fallen. needs to get off the, the critical one to two spells, right? And sometimes the limitation on, on, on it being built on, like, your position one is, is always the fact that during those two seconds, you don't actually deal any damage yourself. But he doesn't like, care. Exactly, you're an Omni Knight. You're, yeah. you're fine with having those two seconds, as long as you get the chance to get the GA or the Repeller. So, but that radiance damage, though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it does add up, especially if in the midst of five heroes. Interesting development for this game. 20 to 15, that clean fight for complexity, pulling them to an 8k gold lead. They're sitting a racks ahead of Optic Gaming. With these two lineup, you could basically just look at your watch and judge who's going to win the team fight based on how long the team fight is. Optic could only win the team fight if it goes like, you know, 20, 30 seconds, because that's kind of how they are built with the Brewmaster split, with the uh, Omni Knight stuff. But that team fight was like five, six seconds. That Ice Blast connecting on two, CK coming in. Yeah, they, they just can't, they can't deal with having two heroes just getting blown up straight away yep. by the, the Sand King AA combo. The, the complexity are, are performing absolutely excellently. And also, as we said, you know, that fight as well, the, the defensive capability of the Kunkas run, something never to be developed. And yeah. it's very hard for Optic to actually get those kills. The bow actually hit nobody offensively, but the run, I think, got applied on at least over half of yeah. the team. Absolutely. It's still not to be knocked down. They're, they're moving up aggressively on that top half of the map. Lim is on the hunt. Let's see if he can get vision onto anyone. No real catch him still. Team Misery TPing out. He's I. So TP straight away. I'm definitely no Razor player, so I've been definitely questioning the, the Razor pick so far, but looking at how the game goes, it, it does a surprising large amount of damage. And he's farming. I mean, granted, he's great. like the highest net worth yeah. by a mile, but his passive has been... Like, he, he's just running in the team fights. When he's next to Creep Wave or Enchantress Creep, it doesn't look that impressive, but in that instance where he's just punching the team fights, and that stuff damage, damage adds up. It is, as you say, it's a, it's a bit of a bit of a downside, yeah, in, in this sort of chaos with the fights that there is no control of where that prop goes, and uh, half the time it is a creep tanking it. And so it does not prop it up here. Am I going for a... I mean, again, this... This means he can stay even further back. He shouldn't be caught out. I mean, another alternative to that is the Aghanim Scepter. But of course, Aghanim Scepter only casts your ult and if you need to Radiance pull the tower storm or heal or something like that. And he does want to at least you know, have a little potential to be aggressive and you know, stay with the Radiance. He does want to sit sort of in the midst of the fight, but he doesn't want to go wrong. Gold coming back for the Reaver. An optic, they are going to start to push complexity back. They've got a push coming in on the bottom lane. Ult's ready to go, Prana split and GA are there. Well, Pycat, actually back up, up towards the top lane. And hey, he's going for it. We talked about it, Lumi. After the blink, he has indeed. He's queued up that Eon Disc on Omni Knight. I like it. I think we sort of talked about it. And as you said, there's definitely benefit for it over the Legion. The, the bigger concern is that as he's getting more and more defensive item, and so is the Brewmaster, who is going to be lifting the damage? I mean, it, as we said earlier, yeah, Storm Spirit. It's all the Storm. Yeah. Storm to do the damage. I mean, he needs the bigger mana <laughs> pool and, and more items. To be all that. I don't know. I don't know if it's enough. Definitely, yeah, the issue definitely is damage output. I also wonder what his level 25 talent would be. There's a, definitely a very interesting discussion as a caster. Like, uh, I think even as, as Mimi as the, the Remnant. The Remnant, the Remnant gives you more damage. 
Well, I guess so, so does the overload. But so does, yeah, going for the immunity. I mean, but I, who's actually buying immunity right now? Dude, you're against. You're against. BKB on the Razor, I, I mean, guess that's the only one. No, they got, they got it on the, the CK as well. Okay, okay. But did you see that uh, that clip on I Reddit? Did. But as where you, you could level up as here. was said, you have to do it while stiffing. If if CCSD does that in this game, I'll be mind blown. But uh, I don't think we're seeing him pull that one off. Yeah. I, I guess I guess the uh, the overload just makes more sense given that there's two. Overall, there's many more situations where that that is going to come in use. And and uh, and not just this game, I mean, most games. If you're playing a Storm Spirit, the enemy's going to be picking up BKBs. If, sure. they, if they know what's what. I'm mm -hmm. interested as well that... I mean, both, I mean, we're talking about the lack of offensive potential. Both Pika and CCSC, they're both in Shiva's guards. I mean, do, do you feel that it's really necessary that they both buy one? Maybe the way that Optic is looking at this team play is, look, we're not going to burst anybody down. We're going to just have to I mean, outlast I guess, them. But, uh, even if they outlast them, are they actually going to kill anyone at the end of the day? I mean, I think you start off the team fight by killing heroes like the Kyle from the Z3 Sure. I, I, it just looks so hard from this. Yeah, it, it really I'm does. just wondering where the damage is coming in. That, it is a big Oh, here comes this push. What do you do against the Adam Inspector? Let me try. Yeah. Could, is there a, I, I think Rubik I saw was building up a Yule Scepter. So the next time they could do this, they could take the buff from here. Right, they will jump forward, Limp. Let's get brought back. It, it, there is a lot of ifs and, and question marks on, yep. on the way that Optic can play this game from, from now being behind. I mean, and it's got Shiva's guard, it's certainly not as offensive to the Storm in terms of the, sure. the mana pool and the ability to sit around a little bit more. That also gives you the vision, which is true. pretty important when certain heroes are hiding from the line and stuff like that. We saw the previous engagement. Brewmaster, remember, he smoked up from the south and blinked in and actually clapped nobody because he didn't have vision on, on the back line of the fight. Hey, Hastings for Limp. Optic are looking to fight, but a hasted Razor will uh, quite happily take the opportunity to do so unless they uh, lose one of the stars. Jesse quit with a blink. As soon as he spots BPD, they post the BKB and he knows. Yeah, he's got a hastery. Oh, no, no, it's going to wear out, but he was still ahead yeah. the center of the fight, forcing Pycat back. The Argus CCSD trying to pick off Sea Freak. Sea Freak forced away, finally goes down. CCSD does get the kill. Cost him quite a bit of mana, though. Promisbit comes through. Bombs oh, die, but he's lost the Earth Banner. He's going to die during the split. They lost Pycat. Double kill for Lim. CCSD's trying to fight up against it, but CCSD's out of mana. He's got to get out of there. That's Cole. They're looking to chase. They'll put the jump charge. Moose on the hunt. He'll jump forward with the Shiva's guard. They've got the vision. Falls forward with the power strike. Moose gonna find it. Empty center as well. CCNC. He's gotta kill himself. He really has, so and there we have it. Tower. Well, we got to use a couple of buybacks that we're looking to defend. The bolt just flies. Yeah, having to commit suicide with the bloodstone and buying back. This is not where CCNC wants to be. Oh, no. They've got the power strike. They've got the damage. That's They're gonna lose CCNC off the buyback. What the heck is going on? I think. So many question marks for the draft and the items of this stage for Optics lineup. What was the plan? It just... It didn't seem like there was ever going to be any. They just don't do any damage. They run it. I mean, it is a carry Omni night, so there was sort of question marks from minute one. What the plan was this game. But it fell apart and complexity at this stage looked to be taking an easy stroll to winning the series and knocking Optic Gaming down to the lower bracket. Oh, here comes the carry on, Nick. There he goes. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. He's going to be on the blue master. It looks like he's going to get hit by the boat. That's going to be a little bit. Better be careful because they're going to have to carry on. You know, they're looking at all. Near the end of them. But no, with that, it's game over. Will this be dead? GG is cool. This game is over and done. Complexity take the victory. 2 1. Off to gaming. We will see them again, but they'll be down in the lower bracket playing in the third and final series of today. They have a series to prepare for it. But maybe they were looking for more damage coming out from the Chantress with the Impetus. Maybe. I mean, maybe it's just like PPD, he didn't have, he had a hood. He had a good early I mean, game. Yeah, um, I, I, it's, it feels like they're trying stuff, and sometimes it just is. Maybe I mean, the problem is they had both Brood and Omni Knight. I think if they had those individual pieces separately with a higher damage core on the other lane, it would have been fine, but yeah. the fact that they had both, it was just maybe the issue there. Wow. There we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Complexity taking the series 2-1.
a, a very interesting, an interesting end to it. I'll be interested to see the discussions and, yeah. and, and maybe, well, we, we aren't going to get into the minds of Optic Gaming, unfortunately, for now, as we won't be making the call to them. They are they're the losers. We talk to the winners here at Dream League, <laughs> and uh, I imagine we'll be talking to Complexity pretty soon. But that is it, ladies and gentlemen, for this first series of the day. Complexity Gaming, take it 2-1 up in Odipixel. He's been a fantastic luminous. We'll see you soon. We're going to head back to the panel straight away. Back to you, Sheep. Yeah, thank you very much.